Okay, welcome back to part two of my Lotus Notes provisioning example where we showed you how a single provisioning request to an item managed user, Gen Alba, cascaded into multiple auditable requests that we can see here for password change complete. So the part two here will then show you how the user can then submit a password change for themselves via the item self-help user interface and not have to have anyone's help in regards to a delivery mechanism for passwords so that they can help themselves and no one will know their password when administratively reset through the system. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go over into the item interface for self-help. And we're going to note one thing before we do that. We're going to go over to Loaded Notes ID Vault. And on the Domino server, what we did previously was from the item system here defined by a uh, workstation, we submitted a a password change that went to the IBM HTTP server, ultimately to the WebSphere servers that are running a database and an LDAP that manage our users, that went to a remote Lotus Notes adapter that hit an API call to then manage Domino. The result of that was a success, and the outcome for the target user was their Lotus Notes ID file was synchronized to their workstation when they actually logged into the workstation. So that was the grand picture here, and in doing that, their ID file was updated in the Lotus Notes vault. So when we go back and we look at the vault, we'll see here that this user had a new timestamp change. And if you look at part one when we got to the screen, it was 1037 when the ID vault value was updated previously, and now it's at 1049. So we know that the vault got updated, and I just wanted to point that out. So in this example here, we're going to have a user that's going to go out there and help themselves. Um, the self-help user interface is something that comes with the ITIM product already, and you just have to enable it and run it. Um, what this does is it allows the user to help themselves. Now, the only way to access a computer is to log in. You've got to have a password. So you have to have an entry point, whether it be a portal page that has a username and password set to the month, or um, it is some um, guest account, and I know that's taboo in this space, but you've got to have a way in, right? You've got to let the user get to a keyboard, whether it's someone who allows them shared access or whatever the case may be, but you've got to get to the screen. So you guys can figure that out, but let's see how it works. So the user here, J Alba doesn't know what their password is, any of the systems, can't get anything. I logged into the Help Me account and that got me to this screen and only this screen. When you click Forget Your Password, the ITEM interface will go out there and present you with one of your challenge response questions that you answered when you were onboarded to the system. And if you can successfully answer this question, then it will then allow you to then do a password change for yourself. So now it came out here and it gave you my password rules, things that I can do, and we're going to go ahead and enter a password here. IBM for Fern2P is the new password, and we're going to go ahead and submit that. Now I am the end user, and I submitted this for myself. I managed a password change, and I have completed that through the TIM interface. I didn't know what my previous password was, so I couldn't get in to do my job logged into this portal, got me here, told me my password change was done, I can get out of here. And this view is completely customizable, so you can just alter it from the UI perspective and only get one of the options here, or all of them. It doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and log out of here now, and we're going to go back to our client that we have here, and we're going to log in. So in the Tim side of it, we're going to show you the completed request after, but let's just log in now. IBM for Fern2P. That got me into the domain. So no administrator told me what my password is. I did it myself. Once I get into there, I can go ahead and go over to the Domino side and enter the same password. Now ID Sync took over and is in the process of copying the ID information over to my local workstation ID file and synchronizing those two. The uh, fanciest part of that is that now when I log into the DWA account, since my HTTP password is told to synchronize, I get my webmail as well. 
So now all parts of this are completely done through the password change through Tim, and I, the end user, did it for myself. Nobody had to help me. I just needed access to the portal, whatever that is. Uh, let's go back real quick to the Tim side on the administrative end of it, and let's just see how that audit trail will change here. Now note here that the multiple account password changes that were done were done by the system administrator. Let's go in there and see how they were done now and who shows up as the administrator of the request, right? Who requested the password change is really what we're going after. Because from an audit perspective, we want to know if admins are doing our password change for our users or are our users helping themselves, right? Can they fulfill their own needs? Ultimately, self-sufficiency is what we want to gain here. So let's let these view requests come through and we'll just do a request for all pending requests. And again, the latency of the screens here is from the screen capture information that's passing back to record this demo here. So, let's just let the update happen to the screen and then you'll be able to see the difference here. And it's a big point to note out here because the difference between a user being able to help themselves and having to call a help desk is a pretty big saver of time. Now, the view all request is going to show us some information here. First of all, of course, is the total account summary, whether the transaction succeeded or failed, or if there are any warnings or any problems. But the piece of information that we really want to see here is the section for the requester in the audit trail. We note the request was success. We note it was a change to multiple account, date and time submitted, but the requester. Here, in the second request that we see down, it was system administrator that did the request for the user GenAlba. In the last recorded success, we see that the requester was the end user, meaning they helped themselves. So from an item perspective, Lotus Notes ID Vault, really critical here to synchronize the ID file. That really solved a big situation for the management of ID files. And in the Tim's perspective, the user being able to help themselves, very beneficial because there's no need to have anyone else help the user. Um, all this was done on the ITIM server. Um, in my example here, we're using an AIX61 server running ITIM51. DB2 and IBM's LDAP are the backend servers. You're using WebSphere 6.1 to manage the application, and the IBM HTTP server is taking the request from the first node in the cluster. So the provisioning from cradle to grave would be the provisioning of the account, the setting of the password, the user is onboarding. When the user is onboarded, they set their challenge response. Once they've set that, they're able to help themselves for self-sufficiency. And ultimately, the user can end up having a password change that they can administer themselves and have no one else know. And when they don't even know it, the administrator can reset it or they can reset it themselves. That's the end of part two of this example. If you'd like to see more, please use the contact information here to send us an email and let us know you'd like to see more of these. Thanks.